All right, so it's time for the big ringy video to rank every Arrowverse show ever. Currently, Britain is on December 2020. There are currently 29 shows, 29 seasons. Arrow, Flash, Constantine, Supergirl, Legends, Batwoman, and Black Lightning. I'm not including Vixen or The Raid. Those are web series and they're shorts. And then technically, 90s Flash and Smallville are part of it, but those are their own list. So I'm not going to... Plus, if I would include it, oh, there would be like 40. So plus, it's probably going to be more because of, you know, this year's or next year's like shows are coming in. I'm going to update those. So the big sort of ranking i'm not gonna waste any time i don't want this video to be too long so here are my rankings for every arrowverse season slash show at number 29 arrow season 4 don't need to explain this at all basically fan fiction worst fan fiction ever all of these super toxic laurel yeah demon dark sucks no magic sucks in arrow and that's on number 29 don't need to say anything about that number 28 supergirl season 1 original cbs or not cbs right N nbc either way it looks like the budget looks good however like the villains suck the narrative sucks i do like uh, melissa benoist as supergirl Girl, good casting i like his sister i like jimmy olsen i like win and cat grant i like her as well she's probably the best part of like the first season. all four of you standing there doing nothing you look like the attractive yet non-threatening racially diverse cast of a cw show season however i don't think these characters could have saved the first season from the bad writing and bad villains it's just like look at just red tornado and supergirl from smallville the actor playing this blue like alien thing this is awful this is not good so good characters good to cast just suck that everything else of this first season so yeah 28 is supergirl season one number 27 is supergirl season two Two. Same issues with the first season, but just slightly better. It doesn't help that they introduce Monel, which Kara has feelings for, which is not this. Not this religious shit BS, and they do it. But despite that, get John Jones, I gotta mention John Jones in the first season. He's great in this season as well. An underused character, mainly supposed to be as powerful, if not more powerful than Supergirl. But because of budgetary reasons, they kind of have to pull back on him and cut him out in most cases, which sucks. Who's the villain for this season? I forgot the villain. Who's the, who's the villain? I don't remember. This season's forgettable. It's bad. But they also introduced Lena, who is a good character, who be friend's car which is good like befriending would be important later on in the season but as for season two still a bad season of supergirl just slightly better but that's at number 27 number 26 arrow season se morning 4587 beautiful day the first half of this season with the whole prison arc was good that's all i cared about every other character their arc were fine but oliver being in prison facing the enemies that he wants to put away as the green arrow and revealing his identity in the last season of the finale amazing shit he even befriends a little crazy friend all the fights are cool all like the action like prison pieces are really awesome really cool and then the Emiko queen episode was good as well and then the elseworlds episodes and decided to the start of the second half episode 11 where it's like what's happening what, what happened here beth schwartz the new showrunner did so well in the first half i don't know if this is her decision a higher ups decisions because it feels like she's doing so well and then someone came in and be like hey stop and they changed it midway and it's like why 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 Emigo queen's like the leader of the ninth circle and she's being manipulated she kills her master this is other people that are getting about the beatrice is that the name fucking beatrice who's that i don't know that's a name that's forgettable like the season finale was not good it was kind of awful left arrow season seven such a sour note sour taste in my mouth it's like it ruins the whole season for me the first half was so good it's like what happened here what happened during the writer's room and what happened just what happened i actually want to know what actually happened because it, it could have been so good but it just sucked it just stunk out in the second half sadly so that's why it's at number 26 number 25 is the flash season 3 we're getting into the okay seasons now where they're not good but they're also not bad a lot of dumb stuff in it so the flash season 3 for me is a big old waste of time not a bad season salvatore is actually a threatening like villain he's big scary all the white lightning it's awesome flash again one episode i have to get over that and then episodes to reveal that barry was salvatore the other barry I don't know it just never with me i never thought i was awesome i was just like that, that's a waste of time all season leading up to this moment and it just I was like what it's a big what the fuck moment not only that they waste wally he gets his powers halfway through in the season and they do nothing with him aside from being in the final which is a cool little like fight in the finale which by the way iris kills a human being by the way and the the lightning scene at the end him like the sports lightning stuff they do nothing with that absolutely nothing that does not come back in season four five or six they do nothing with that and they just wasted that season three is a big old waste of time not bad not good it's just okay because it's a huge waste of time number 24 is supergirl season 5 kind of a bit disappointment from season 4 because it was so good so coming into season 5 it's got a pre-crisis like thing going on they could have done something much more with the leviathan because obviously they're gonna bring back lex because of the monitor from last season right so save him for the last half of season 5 the first half deal with the leviathans quickly or like in the first half get rid of them but instead they drag out the leviathans use overuse lex now i like uh, john Cryer's lex i think he's good a lot of people give him 
I do overuse them. It's as if Warner Brothers allowed them super crow team to be like, hey, you can use Lex as much as you want. You can keep it as much as you want. And it's still unknown how much they're gonna use Lex because he's in that weird position where he's like, can you use him or not use him from Warner Brothers? So either way, I like Lex, but he's overused. They waste the whole Lena and Supergirl thing. First of all, she's real that she's Supergirl in the first episode, which I did not expect. She gets her new suit, like Iron Man suit thing, it looks cool as fuck. But then Lena, despite knowing and like despite Supergirl apologizing to her, she still goes after her, wants to go kill her because she couldn't help that they lie to her or something. Like it's convoluted dumb and they wasted that whole thing. Whole Alina being evil. And she's supposed to be one of the smartest characters ever, and she's being played by her own brother and mother and like stuff like that. I get it, it's family, but it's like you're supposed to be smart here, Lena. Like what the hell? You know, it's a lot of dumb stuff. I do like Dreamer and the whole brainy thing. That's cool as well. All the multiverse post crisis effect, the whole brainies being inside that one brainy, that's cool as well. Like like it's cool, but again, a lot of wasted stuff, just like with the Flash season three. Wasted and a huge disappointment of Supergirl season five. Number twenty three is the Flash season five. This is more of a just a late not lazy but boring season or the Flash Barry Allen is not the main character no more. Season five of the Flash was Nora Allen's character, Nora West Allen. Which isn't a bad idea, but here's the thing. Like I wouldn't mind it if she was a better character because she messes up a timeline creates a new timeline and when she does go away i don't feel bad for her she deserved this she did this, she did this to herself and well not technically not because she was played by thon thon and her created his new timeline so thon can get out from the cicada dagger and cicada herself and later in the later half herself cool villain but definitely stretch out the villain when i was watching the first half of lives of season five i was like they're using cicada a lot in each episode probably gonna be done by the first half of right no nope. and they could have defeated him in multiple times but guess what guess what they find two boys for him to get out team flash and so it just makes Barry look dumb and the whole team look dumb. They couldn't find a way to like have a new villain or something or like put Cicada in certain episodes where this feel like he's being stretched out. Like it was the structure of the season was a big old mess. This was some cool episodes like King Shark vs. Girl. Like Bro, that was an awesome, awesome episode. And Reverse Flash being the uh, behind everything, that was cool as well. I don't know, man. Aside from that, I ain't got much to say about it. It's boring and nothing really happens in this season at all. And number 22 is Arrow Season 6. Another season of Arrow where super messy and mishandled, where throughout the season, it's just ups and downs, right? The aftermath of the Leah New exploding, kind of disappointing, but everyone kind of knew that. The two-part Death Road episode was cool. The Team Arrow breaking up thing felt super forced. The flip-flopping with the villains with Kate and James and, and the whole six villain thing and then black siren and then like you know ds picardo ds like the dragon it's like what are the what is this season doing like the writers and showing and i don't know what the hell they're doing after the fifth season the amazing fifth season like it seems like everyone was all on like throwing a dart at a board being like okay what do i do next all right that is the next like like it was just mishandled and then him revealing his identity was cool but and then like quentin dying felt i don't know felt empty to me so yeah it's a super messy like season that was handled poorly so that's number 22 number 21 is batwoman season one. This show gets a lot of hate, which you do get. The marketing did not help. Again, super bad marketing. You're supposed to get a show excited, a new show, you know, get people excited for a new show. And whoever did the trailers or whatnot and the marketing did horribly. More specifically, that tattoo trailer and ad. So, going into it, the first episode was okay. And then there are a few episodes throughout the 20 episode season where it's kind of cringy, but it doesn't ruin the whole season for me. I don't feel like it's not trying to push anything. Aside from, again, from those few episodes, it doesn't, again, it doesn't ruin the whole season for me. Ruby Rose is a good Batman, but you can definitely tell. It feels like something's going on behind the scenes that will probably never be said to the public where something happened because it's as if she was excited but then she probably wasn't prepared to like be in Vancouver for as long as she was and made her thinking about what to do with her career and she didn't she wanted out and now there's a new Batwoman in the lead so at the very start in the beginning this show it seems like it's going up against everything and uh, I don't think it deserves quite the hate that it gets but the season as a whole it's okay it feels more like an Alice show than a Batwoman show which isn't good Ruby Rose's Kate Kane is not the greatest the Batwoman's good I feel like CW has her for the Batwoman look but her Kate Kane, I don't know if it's just on like the script issue or her acting, but it doesn't translate well to me. So in the end, we just get a jumbo mess of a season and it's okay, it ended okay. And uh, how are they gonna wrap things up with the whole new Bad Woman? Like that's the thing, it's going to start messy again, just like with the first season and the next season. So, you know, it's a jumbo mess of a season, but Bad Woman season one is just okay. And it's at number 21. Number 20 is Constant. My name is John Constantine. I'm the one who steps from the shadows, all trench coat and arrogance. 
um, that I really wanted to like. I had not seen the show before, and so I, I watched it because I saw him on the Euroverse. So I was like, okay, this is a cool character. Sadly, the pilot episode was only the good one. The rest of it is pretty lame. More dark magic stuff, right? From John Custling, that he's better. He, you know, he's the best part. The whole Fallen Angel of the Zed and the very Monster of the Week feel to it, it just didn't work for me. Going in, I thought it was gonna be like a Lucifer esque slash X Files esque slash Supernatural esque feeling of a show because he's dealing with supernatural stuff and it, it just, I don't know, it didn't do it for me. Clearly, NBC didn't feel as well. There's supposed to be more, but then they just canceled us. Like, okay, I can see why because it just, it just, I don't know, it just didn't translate well. And and it's not Matt Ryan's fault. I feel like it's like the showrunner or so. Again, I don't know whose fault is it, but it, it could have been something a lot more. But instead, what we got was disappointments, a lot of disappointing stuff like the seasons and, and the other shows. But yeah, Constantine is at number 20. Number 19 is Supergirl season three. Again, another situation where the first half is really good, but because of sexual allegations and rewrites and whatnot, the second half suffers quite a bit. So the whole rain stuff in the first half, amazing, it's great. Car stuff is great. The whole Samantha daughter, don't like that. Her struggling between Monel, which is dumb, but which leads her defeat in the midseason finale. And then after that winter break, Monel is back, the Legion is back. And that's where far as part, where they rekindle the whole Monel thing, which is really dumb. And then Supergirl just kind of becomes Supergirl again. Rain starts becoming a lame villain. And yeah, it just starts to fall apart. Again, they have to rewrite all those stuff because one certain producer rewrote most of Supergirl season three and was very heavily behind the show and so you know they had to do that so it's not the show's fault well it kind of is but it's like yeah they kind of shot themselves in the foot with the whole rewrite stuff so you know something that was set up in the first half sadly they didn't come to fruition in the later half so Supergirl season three is at number 19. number 18 arrow season three another it's not as the same as supergirl where the first half is good it's not really good like supergirl the second half is just okay it's not as bad as supergirl season three where it just fell off arrow had a really good missus finale it's debatable but yeah that makes this finale was great it was good at first half with the racial ghoul and not killing sarah like a big shock right and then everyone becoming like a hero like laura lance became black canary within months it's just or not even months within like episodes is like, okay i get they're trying to get her to become black canary because she is black canary but like we have all city they're dealing with all city stuff this is the start of that and you know the way racial ghoul went out too he just allowed oliver to kill him basically just be like this is the prophecy it's like okay whatever athea being trained by Malcolm Rill, that was cool but it led to kind of nowhere i mean it didn't lean nowhere but it just was like all right that's that most of it felt like just like a constant okay you know nothing was bad nothing nothing was innately you know bad bad but nothing was innately great great as well so it just stayed in the middle for me so arrow season three is at number 18 number 17 is legends of tomorrow season one or just legend going on it's, i'm gonna call it legends season one another situation where like first half all of the material has been wasted in the crossover the heroes own races so the first half is a lot of filler a lot of retreads of characters arcs because it is an ensemble cast the whole sarah bloodlust the whole uh, mick and one with miller stuff like those are all retreads kind of still new and the hawk people they're just like the worst parts about the show the first season but then after the mid break ray sarah and the hawk girl they're stuck in time in the 50s they come back looking strong you know them going to different time periods and between savage it still to me didn't quite save the season but getting started off kind of rough but it went up to an okay and that stayed in okay so that's how i feel about season one of legends of tomorrow that's why it's at number 17 right, i think we're halfway there which i think 16 right almost is a halfway point but either way number 16 is arrow season eight they spent like five episodes setting up a show that was still hasn't happened yet maybe it is who knows and, so, and they lied to us too they said that episode nine would be the factor pilot setting up the show but they lied it was that episode and the four other episodes leading up to the nothing currently maybe it'll change this season won't go up or down because i still feel that it was a big waste of time but the first three episodes were great arrow episodes of multiverse traveling and they make the past and future meeting together we get all of her training mia which feels undeserved because she's just she's ready to be a, a badass but she doesn't feel like a badass and i don't know if that's just the actor playing mia or the script but i don't know i don't feel like she's a badass she could be it doesn't feel earned or deserved for some reason and they even force her in the crossover of christ and infinite earth shoving her in our faces being like, look at this look, look at this there's a new show it's like i'll watch it whatever to set up nothing that would never ever, ever happen or it may depending again i'm recording this on december 23rd 2020 it may become for fruition who knows because the actor wants to really do it but yeah it's just that the last season arrow felt just wasted the other half was good the ending was relatively in in a good way in in a way that made sense yeah that's all i gotta say it ended in a way that was relatively good sense but was wasted with a lot of setup number 15 is legend season four the issue with legend season four is that it's kind of forgettable this is probably should have been down lower 
four and most people's list I i'm a huge fan of legends clearly it's, i'm willing to forgive i'm not it's not that i'm willing to forgive it's just I, I just don't have the same issues that people do with legends most of the time with the season four and five specifically it's very slapsticky however despite this it is still weird that some characters do feel sidelined like nate and his father the time bureau stuff that kind of lame and the whole zari and nate relationship that inherently is just kind of forced in our face just being like hey accept this is like no this is kind of weird it could be a bit goofy at times i will admit there, there are some two goofy moments even for me people are like oh man i love this part and they wasted john constantine not the character himself but the dark arts they do nothing supernatural or exorcist stuff at all which is kind of disappointing so that's why it's at number 15 and number 14 is the flash season 4 Again, tonally, it's all over the place. Sometimes it'd be too goofy, slapsticky, stuff like that. And sort of, I was sort of against the Felicity treatment where being there for no reason, like, she doesn't need to be there. She's the leader of Team Flash for no reason. She's a reporter. She's like the leader now. And she says that you're not the Flash, Barry, and we are the Flash. You are not the Flash, Barry. We are which is ridiculous the saving grace for me is the new flash suit and the finger despite him dying in a very lame way with a push of button i think the finger is a cool villain and the first non speaker villain and i think they did it pretty well with devoe and him being this fast thing in life against the fastest man in life which is a cool idea and fulfilled its fruition mostly throughout the season so i like the and i like ralph a lot of people didn't like him in the first season he's introduced i've always liked them too bad he is gone now because of tweets i guess but i've always liked so number 14 is season 4 the flash number 13 legend season 5 Again, with Legends Season 4, a forgetful season. I can't remember much from the rerun of the Spear of Destiny with the whole Luma Fate thing. It's a rerun of, of Season 2, which begs the question, should the show even on as long as it should be? Because writers are clearly running out of ideas. Constantine, again, wasted the potential there. Every character is kind of goofy now. Sarah, like in the Seasons 2 and 3, had some serious into it. It's kind of mostly full-on goofy. There's even like a Supernatural reference and cameo. Which we see the Apollo, which is awesome and yeah i'm like not gonna say much because i'm getting like oh asha the whole like her putting in the coins thing that was felt like it wasn't there and then charlotte being the sister of the fates or whatever that was cool as well but then like asha who's a villain then becomes an ally thing which is fine so it's a good season i liked it and it had you know bong song you know so we had a return of the mac and bong song which is great so yeah number 13 season 5 of legends of tomorrow number 12 will be black lightning season 2 a good season of black lightning but it's just not as good as the season 1 and 3 mainly because of the topic and issues that they talk about which is it, it is kind of feeding you and being over the head just a little bit just a little bit especially that like white principal thing that they need to be there but it was there you know jennifer kisser sue sadly her and painkiller's story is just a rinse and repeat of the first season which sucks i do like tobias ripping out his spine disobeying him a sign of disobeying him tobias is still great you have Dealt looming in the background at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the season, which takes the whole family, Jefferson family, and you know, in prison. And then more of the same from J Jefferson himself. Like, doesn't mean more of Black Lightning, which is good, but again, kind of reruns. Not same stories, but it's definitely like, okay, first one was pretty good. What do we do next season? I don't know. All right, but it's still very good. That's why it's at number 12. Number 11 is Supergirl season four. the only season of supergirl that i actually like it's pretty good though agent liberty humans are going against aliens that battle that civil not civil but like the war between those two species is actually good it's like a worse way of a civil war thing which is good supergirl getting her not new suit but the robotic or iron man suit which is there because melissa was busy with like theater acting or something something like that again the rest of the cast are great good lena again finding out that she's been tricked and secretly in her mind in her perspective portrayed by her friends setting up nothing basically because they wasted that arc but she was off them that and in John Cryer's Lex, his introduction, I was apprehensive and sort of like, is this a good idea to introduce Lex in this? But play by John Cryer. Turns out I was wrong. He's actually really good. Like Lex, I like his Lex. Better than Jesse Eisenberg's from BVS. Like there's a lot of like people, you know, wanting super to her identity. That stuff is good as well. And I don't oh, the only thing that's a bad thing is the red daughter thing. Gas is kind of kind of there, you know, whatever. Who cares about that? And then the introduction of Jimmer, and I like her as well. And I think Brainiac is a series regular in the season as well. So he's a good character as well. So good introductions, good additions to the cast. And show and a good narrative throughout the whole season which is not something that superhero can do but this season they somehow did it which is fantastic on their part so that's why it's at number 11 top 10 now at number 10 is arrow season one the first season relatively pretty good the thing that bugs it down for me is just really much of the weak type stuff and the whole love triangle bs again don't like that at all i've never been a big fan of that so it's just kind of like okay more of that love of bs stuff that i don't care about do you get rid of tommy which there is that moment and malcolm merlin as the dark archer fantastic he's scary that's also a positive and negative word malcolm 
Bog and Merlin has a character has gone off so far and become like an anti-villain now. So it does bog it down a bit. But he's really good. He serves his role really well. And the flashbacks are cool as well as well. Like back when it met something in the first couple seasons, it was really cool with Slade and Shadow and Yao Fei. So yeah, cool myth mythos being introduced to us the first season of the Arrowverse. So it's at number 10, Arrow season one. Number nine is Black Lane. Now you should at least give a brother a moment to say something heroic and clever. Now you just pissed me off. Season 1. A very good start to a new show where I wasn't initially interested. Like, I was just like, alright, another another show. And, and don't know if, like, no one knew at the time it was going to be connected or not. But boy, boy, was I wrong. Jefferson as a family man, a hero, retired hero coming back is great. Him having to learn new tricks and whatnot. Both of his daughters. I actually find both of his daughters way more interested than him. Which is kind of a shocker. It's his, like, show, technically, but still his family show and whatnot. Lynn doesn't have much to do. She has much more to do in the second season and mainly the third season. Which is good character development for her. Gamby is a cool character as well him having secrets and some secrets are way worse than others but in the end the family you know brings him to his, to their family because they consider him a family member he is a family friend so his cop buddy i like him as well he's a snarky little like funny cop guy i bill hendrickson i think that's his name he's cool as well and then tobias the moment he was on screen he was amazing the actor played him really well and hopefully he doesn't die in the last season or he probably will but he's amazing he's just that good joey where'd you find this clown Black Lightning Season 1 is at number 9. Number 8 is Black Lightning Season 3. Kind of the same, well not the same, but just my favorite season of Black Lightning because of the whole prison thing and them trying to you know break free and break free from Odell's like prison thing. Reviving Painkiller. And speaking of Painkiller, they've turned it into a goddamn Terminator. He's basically a killing machine, which is awesome. Awesome. And this, uh, her arc was, won't lie, not interesting. Losing her power and gaining it back, and then her girlfriend having powers as well. That was fine. Jennifer having way more to do, not dealing with love bullshit, right? Her having like Jean Grey, like Phoenix powers, flying through a uh, freedom and been working for Odell and trying to kill Odell. Pain killing himself, having to battle within his inside his mind with a Terminator version of him. That was cool as well. Black Lightning getting his new suit looks way more slicker, looks way just cooler. Tobias is basically a sitting duck in this season, which sucks, but they serve that for Odell stuff and a new meta. The new first meta post crisis stuff right grave digger who so far has actually been pretty good and pretty threatening during the war he was created to be the first meta and he is in his new earth prime time he's a new meta so i wonder how they're gonna resolve that in, that in the last season just dropping that big bombshell just being like whoops we're gonna have to wrap this up with tobias as well so yeah everything that introduced the new post crisis and the whole being imprisoned by odell and the asa all that stuff is great just right and number eight number seven is the flash season six It felt like a resurgence for the show. Season 3, 4, and 5 didn't do justice for the show. New show owner Eric Wallace and season 6 itself has redeemed it, in my opinion. Opening with Flash Gordon stuff in the beginning, awesome, right? The new suit is probably the best it ever will be without the golden boots. Dealing the first half being a horror show with blood work while dealing with Crisis. After that, post Crisis timeline, dealing with the Mirror Master version, Ava, Eva, Ava, uh, Ava, I think. I'm forgetting her name. But then because of COVID, I was only 19 episodes, so it's next season, season 7. But yeah, the way they integrated Reverse Flash, Nash Wells, and I don't mind Allegra and Chester. Hopefully, they can become cooler characters in the future. But right now, they're fine. You know, like, what up, party people? That stuff. It's fine. I don't mind it. But yeah, so far, really good resurgence. And I can give you, like, the, the second half. It is a bit slow. But personally, for me, I didn't mind it. I thought it was good. First half is clearly better with Blower. He returns. He's awesome. Russo. Hopefully, he does, they do something good with him season 7. He's awesome. And that big cliffhanger scene, which supposedly is reverse Flash related. So hopefully, we find out in, you know, next season. But the Flash season 6 is at number 7. A good resurgence for the show number six is the flash season one a really great start however it is like a play-by-play -play first season where there's a love triangle very much of the week but does it in a very interesting way that doesn't feel like oh god there's a lot of episodes it sets up bearing maintaining and not only maintaining his speed but making his speed go faster which is great e barthar handing with the harrison wells all the secrets and whatnot him killing his mother iris surface role as a reporter eddie especially your service or erasing himself and e bar from existence yeah it's really cool and the black hole at the end set in a multiverse stuff really good like first season despite feeling cw and generic with the whole monster of the week feels new and fresh i don't know i can't explain it but it is at number six and number five is legends season two the legion of doom is awesome reverse getting past villains from other airverse shows and redeeming some of them like reverse flash didn't need to be redeemed malcolm Merlin a little bit of the bad writing he got and then ultimately 100 percent redeeming damon dark completely into legion of doom that's awesome their one episode elseworld was awesome as well nate he would i've always liked him the historian his steel battle the whole him and vixen thing don't care about that what else we got 
about Sarah becoming the new leader until not stating until Rip you know states that she's the new leader at the end of the season, which is great. Rip being gone returning in that Star Wars episode, which is fantastic. With George Lucas being the trash compactor, that was awesome. What else? Oh yeah, they bring in like Leonard Snart at the end of it as well, which is awesome. And then what else? I'm trying to remember something else. It's just awesome. And then that end scene with all of reverse flashes coming in. He should have been able to kill every one of those members, but either Way. still awesome and then hurt the spirit of destiny stuff again redone in season five but better in this season and then once again redoing and re-erasing reverse flash once again so it's an amazing season of legends and an amazing portrayal of the legion of doom number four is legends season three season two and three can flip flop for me but i do like season three mainly because of the lord bebo the god of war bebo i mean everything about this character and his fluffy doll or whatever is amazing He cuddles you to death with Moss at the end with the big old heart of love. I mean, what more can you love of that? We've got Return of the Mac. You know, it, it's a good blend of the serious tone and the you know goofy tone, in my opinion. It's a good blend of mix of which is why it works with like a small girl of God, a rod, a big rod, girl killing people, and then the whole war thing with Mick and the introduction of Constantine. They bring him back for the whole exorcist stuff. It's when it gets dark and serious. And then we got Bebo behind in the shadows as well. And then we have a Groundhog Day episode, like mix both tones perfectly, in my opinion, which is why it's at number four. At number three it will be Arrow season five. This season of Arrow, Prometheus is awesome. The only downside is that the first half wasn't as good as the second half. It takes a while. Seems like the writers didn't know what to do with whole finding recruits for Team Arrow, and then it's like, okay, we'll go after Prometheus, which he even has a perfect alibi to go after with the Green Arrow because he's killed his father before. All that stuff is great. And the Adrian Trace has a villain always being like ahead or it feels like ten or twenty steps ahead of Oliver Queen, which is awesome. Always in his head. He even got him to say he loved what. killing that one scene in episode 17 was awesome and then it kind of been this season would have been the finale would have been a perfect way to end the series of Lian Yu blowing up with you know every hero being on the boat right now but Adrian Trace kill himself Lian Yu blowing up and then title card arrow would have been a perfect way to end it but either way a fantastic villain a fantastic finale bringing everything back with Deathstroke, Boomerang, Tyler Agu, Nissa Agu, and Lance and everyone in the finale it was awesome the flashbacks are fine forget them it's an amazing season of arrow and a resurgence for the show at the time so it's at number three so number two is arrow season two that Deathstroke season. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Man, oh man, I mean, do I ever have to explain why this season is great? Deathstroke was set up to be an amazing villain for the first season of flashbacks, so the season two flashbacks, and him manipulating the whole court thing, not government thing or whatever, president thing? What the hell I'm saying? But the CEO stuff, whatever, that one guy, I forgot his name, and then him revealing to be the mastermind behind everything, and then that one episode where they're like shaking hands and beating the whole team for a while, Sarah and Oliver being scared that he has returned, he's not dead, that whole eye patch thing, it sets up for an amazing season because all the build that has already happened, all the work that has been done. So, and Whoever showing this structured the first half to be another villain, the second half mainly to be Deathstroke, and then the big final part with Black Canary and everyone else. Oh, speaking of Black Canary, Black Canary is reduced, Sierra Lance's Black Canary, still the best looking Black Canary suit, any of the suits. Yeah, the one big final fight, him being in prison, not deciding to kill, which is kind of sucks, but it's a new way of being the green arrow or the hood or the arrow. So, everyone knows Arrow Season 2 is amazing and the best. I don't need to explain anything because it just is. So, the number two. But my favorite season of the Arrow shows, my favorite show, or not favorite show, but favorite season, any of these shows the flash season two this man is no god Dude, this is just Zoom's season. A scary fucking villain. Him defeating Barry in episode 6. Sort of just depowering him and messing with the Flash himself. And the Flash having to go to Eobar Thornton Pass. Having to relearn how to use his speed. And feeling self-conscious about his speed so he could defeat, you know, Zoom. That was great. Them introducing the whole multiverse. Harry 2. And the tease of Killer Frost and Cisco's powers. Like, that was awesome as well. Seeing evil versions of each other in the Earth 2 when they go to Earth 2. And what kind of news of the fake Jay Garrick. Obviously, Zoom sent a time room of himself to be a fake Jay Garrick. And then the real Jigger is a doppelganger of his father, father being killed. I'm really going through this fast because I'm not trying to make this video long or for me to edit. It's just amazing. Like, it really is. Zoom actually got to bury mentally and emotionally, killing his father, defeating him, and driving away the closest girl he ever got with. Which, by the way, the Patty character is good because we actually get to see her and Barry develop their relationship on screen, unlike Iris and Barry. They skipped over that from my childhood, which I think is a bad part on whoever decided to do that because, I mean, it makes sense for them to be together, but it's definitely like a, this is that happens in the comics. 
it, it was not shown so that's kind of the issue aside from that the way zoom gets defeated by bear not killing him by having time rifts turn him into black flash and him setting up flash pump at the end which was set up nothing a wasted season of season three but this season alone is my favorite of the errors of what the errors can do so number one my number one show is the flash season two that's all of current 29 i will update these when all the other shows are done airing their next seasons which is by the end of summer 2021 the term record is 43 minutes jesus christ let me edit that down this is a long ass video tired of talking so this has been the road so far and thank you for watching